Okay, so here we go. We're making a video now. So, Bismillah. Okay, folks, test number eight. You have 10 minutes to do this test. What type of triangle is shown below? So, if we look at this triangle, and the clue for the triangle is that these two lengths are the same. In any triangle where two lengths are the same, that's a special name, it's called an isosceles triangle. And just quick definition a scalene triangle would be any triangle that has three, three different lengths. A right angle triangle is a triangle that has a right angle in the corner. An obtuse, uh, like an uh, angle triangle, would be one that has an obtuse angle, which, for example, is there. An equilateral triangle is the one that has all the three lengths the same and all the angles are the same. Okay, so this is an isosceles because it's isosceles because two of the lengths are the same. That's indicated by those two lines and those two angles over there. Lovely, done. Question number two, Candice took a survey in her school. She asked students if they liked gingerbread. Her results uh, are in the table below. How many students said they didn't like gingerbread? So for question number two. Okay, so didn't like gingerbread, we need to add up the numbers here. So we have, didn't like gingerbread is here, no. So you have five, 10, 15, and we have another three and another three. So we have 15 add six, which gives us 21. So folks, when you do your homework and you're doing classwork, feel free to make, make you know, edit the work and make marks on there and draw diagrams on there. That's not a problem. Question number three, how many more girls than boys like gingerbread? So we're looking at this column here now, this bit here. So if I highlight it for you, this is the bit that we're looking at, okay? So now here we go. How many more girls than boys? So by here, they were all equal. So the girls extra one is that one there, which would be one, two, three, four. So we can physically count four of them there. I'll just tick them on the bottom. Four. There we go. Jenny is thinking of a number. She says it has six ones, two tens, yeah. nine thousands. Yes, Ibrahim. What did you write on the um, tiny box? It's four. There's four extra. You got it? Yeah, got it. Okay, Jenny's thinking of a number. It has six ones, two tens, nine thousands, and five hundred. They're just giving you all in like random order. You gotta put them all in the right order. So you have nine thousand five hundred and twenty-six. Okay, question number five. Which of the following fractions is equivalent to two eighths? Now, equivalent to two eighths, we're talking about cancelling, simplifying. So, if I just write that out again a little bit bigger, and we now divide it by the biggest number that goes into two and eight, which is two, that gives you one over four. So, one over four is over here, which is one quarter. Okay, question number six. Question number six says, how long is the eel? Give your answer to the nearest 10. So not only do they want the length of the eel, but they want it to also to round. This is called rounding numbers. So if we look over here, it looks like it's gonna be around about 56 centimeters. To the nearest 10, it's more closer to 60 than it is to 50. So the answer for that one will be definitely 60 centimeters to the nearest 10. So these are the tens. So the so the length of the eel is closer to 60 than it is to 50 or 70. Now question number seven, uh, there's been, I, I think the, when we printed out the work, we've lost the shade. So I'm gonna give everybody a chance to do it quickly right now. But I need to just quickly grab the book. Look, uh, give me a second folks. So there's a little, you can't do question number seven. Question number seven is impossible to do because some shading has been come through on a photocopy. So let's have a look. Okay, so I'm gonna do it for everybody now. I'm gonna give you a chance to have a go at that question. So, Okay. All right. Okay, that one's a little bit too big. Got a bit excited there. There you go. 
Okay, I'm going to give everybody about 30 seconds, maybe a minute maximum. You shouldn't really need a minute. Can you work out the area of the border that I've drawn on there for you now? That didn't come through on the photocopy, just didn't photocopy. It was in light blue. Can everybody have a goal quickly now and work that out if you want to gain an extra mark for the test? So it's not your fault that you couldn't see the question. That's just a printing problem, technical problem. So everybody, please have a go, have a go. I'll work out the area of that and then write it down, then I will give you my answer. Okay, let's get back to question number seven. We had a little bit of uh, photocopy technicality there. So we have here for question number seven, we have 40 squares along the outs, uh, which are shaded, and each one has an area of five. So that gives you an area of 200. So whoever's got it wrong by a little bit, maybe you counted the squares wrong or something, but there are actually 40 physical squares which have been shaded in, and each one is five uh, meters squared, yes? I forgot that um, each square represented five. I just did um, each one. Oh, yeah, yeah, remember, because you got, your, you got this here, haven't you? Yeah, you have to look at that, absolutely. So next time be a bit more careful. If you got that right, you can add that mark into your test. I think only two people got that right. The rest of you, you've got to count it down as a, as a mistake. Okay, next. Question number eight. We have Pablo. Okay, let's have Mr. Maher join me on this question, please, Mr. You can be Pablo. Uh, yes. Was the answer 200? The other one? Yeah, the answer was 200, yes. Okay, Mr. Maher, go. Pablo has a bag of 24 sweets. He eats one third of the sweets, then divides the rest between his four friends. How many sweets does each of his friends get? So how do I work out a third of something, Mahir? You divide by three. So 24 divided by three gives you what? Eight. Fantastic. He goes, then divides the rest. So we've got to work out the rest. So he starts with 24. He has eaten eight. Because he's feeling a bit, you know, yeah, I need some sweets in my life. And what's 24 minus 8? 16. Okay, lovely. So we got 16 left over. And then it says, then he goes, he divides the rest by four of his friends. So you got 16, and the next calculation 16 divided by four, and the answer is? Four. Fantastic. Okay, so if you look at there, folks, you have one calculation here one, two, three calculations. So this is a goal problem. So you have to work through the question in these small components. So you've got three calculations there. Let's move on. Okay. Right, question number, uh, okay. Uh, Mahir, since your mic's open, carry on. Number, uh, next one, please. With Rana. Rana. You know somebody called Rana? Mahir. Hmm? You know Sir? somebody called Rana? Sir? Yes, yes Mama. Was the other question two? The other question was four. 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 Oh. Yeah, there, there's the answer there. Oh. Okay, Mr. Mr. Maher, go. Rana drives for 35 minutes to get to a concert. This clock shows the time of in the evening that she arrives at the concert hall. At what time did she start driving? And your answer is? Uh, 6.35. Okay, let's explain to the class how we got there. So we've got to go back by 35 minutes. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So that would be down here. And then the big hand would be over here. Like that. So that would be absolutely 6.35 because each jump back is worth five minutes. Okay. Next, question number 10. Uh, go on, Mahir. Uh, uh, the concert starts at quarter to eight. How long does it take Rana? How long does Rana have to wait for it to start? So we know that the person that uh, Rana arrives there at seven ten, and you need to wait until quarter to eight. Can you give me quarter to eight digitally, please? What's quarter to eight in the like in this format here? Give me quarter to eight like this. Can you oh, give me a quarter to eight in a digital form? A quarter to eight is like how you speak it, how you verbalize it. Can you give me digitally? Is it 20, 
If it's quarter to eight, no. and have a forty-five in the answer. Nine, nineteen, uh, forty-five. Yeah, which is the same as seven forty-five. Just keep it at the moment. Keep it in uh, because it's a.m. and p.m. and stuff. Keep don't go into, don't jump into twenty-four hour clock. But you were right if you to make equivalent. So seven forty-five. So from seven ten. So how many minutes is there from ten to forty-five? Ten to forty-five. Thirty-five. Absolutely, just minus them. Done. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, right, let's have a question number 11 now. Uh, okay, Mahir, thank you for that. You can mute back up now. Uh, right, let's have uh, Umama. Join me question number 11, please go. Start from there. Okay, how much will it cost in total? For whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. We read the information first. Albert. Albert wants to go bowling for his birthday. The prices for the bowling alley are shown below. And how much would it cost in total for Albert and three friends to play one game? Okay, excellent. Albert and three friends. So Albert, how many people is Albert? How many people is Albert worth? Um, three. Uh, are you sure? Albert, is he that big? Four. Okay, you're not answering my question. You're answering the next question. How many people is Albert? One. One, that's better. And the three means add three. So what's one add three? Four. So four people are gonna play one game. So how much does it cost for one game? Um, 19 pound 50, no, six pound 50. Six pound 50, and how many people are playing six pound 50 games? So how many people are playing six pound fifty? Four. Four. So six pound fifty times by four is working out. That's zero. Five times by four is twenty. Six times by four is twenty-four. Add two is twenty-six. Twenty-six pound. Done. So here you gotta be careful that you realize Albert is one person and the three friends means one at three. That gives you the four people in total playing one game each, six fifty each, time by four is twenty-six pound. So it's all about reading the question carefully, interpreting it, understanding it, and getting on. Okay, this next question, I really like this next question, because most people don't get it right, students, because they don't break it down properly, and they don't understand it. So let's kind of see if we can understand it. So let's have now join us for this particular question, number 12. Uh, I need Omeza, please. Omeza, can you unmute and join us, please, on this question? Okay, Mama, can you mute back up, please? Go. Uh, okay, Omeza, read the question for us. Albert has £100 to spend on games, food and drink for himself and his guests. How many people can Albert invite to his birthday if he wants to pay for everyone to play two games and have a burger and a milkshake? Wow. What a, what a really nice guy. <laughs> He's going to pay for them to have two games and a burger and a milkshake. Okay, so let's look at the key things. So how much money does he have all together? 100 pound. So that's the total amount of money he can spend. So you wanna work at how many people Albert can invite to his birthday. Okay, so everybody's gonna play two games. So Omeza, how much does it cost to play two games? Um, 10 pound. Okay, so we've got 10 pound, this is per person. Okay, so ten pound for the for the two games, yeah. Now, how much does it cost to have a burger and a milkshake? Five pound. Okay, we can work that from here. This part of the table, I added them together. Five pound for a burger and one milkshake. So, how much is that all together then, Omeza? Fifteen pound. So each person is equivalent to 15 pound worth of expenditure for each person. So what do we do next now? Then we uh, do 100 divided by 15. 100 divided by 15. Now you could do it this as a bus stop method or you could just use cancelling technique. So could you help me if I was to do cancelling, Omeza? You can take away um, you can't take away the zeros at the moment because you don't have any in the bottom to, to match them. 
So you can divide it by five, which is the highest common factor. So what's 100 divided by five? 20. And 15 divided by five? Three. And what's 20 divided by three? You can't do it. <laughs> I like that. 20 divided by three, you mean, when you say you can't do it, you mean you can't get a whole number, which is true. But 20 divided by three will give you six whole, because three times by six is 18, and it'll give you two left over. So now the two leftovers doesn't really help us, so basically it means you've got enough for six people. So six people can go all together. Six people is the total that can go. But we have to read the question carefully, the question carefully, because it says here, how many people can Albert invite? <coughs> now remember, if you're going to a birthday party, uh, do you normally go to the party yourself? Or? Omeza? No. If you were going to a birthday party, would you be there? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to pay for yourself, isn't it, as well, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. So in those six people, well, you have to be, uh, you have to remember, the six people, oops, the six people will include yourself. So those six people will include, well, the first person will be Albert. So Albert will be in there. So how many people can you invite then? If he's got enough money for six people, he's one Five. of those people. So he can invite how many people? Five. So the answer actually isn't the six that we found out, it's actually five, because you've got to answer the question the way the examiner's asked you, how many people can he invite? So you assume that Albert's going to go to the party himself, and the people he invited will be him plus whoever else comes. So he doesn't really invite himself, he, just, he will just be there. So that's a really nice question there, lots and lots of working out. Now, one thing I want to quickly mention here before we finish up this part, the, the video is that when I'm looking at your homework, uh, uh, that's coming back to me by WhatsApp, I'm not seeing any working out at all. Either the students in my class are, you know, not, they're like related to Einstein, they got some massive mega brains and stuff, or like that cartoon character Mega Mind. But I see zero calculations. It's like they're so intelligent, they've done it all in their heads. So, sir, not being that intelligent, I've had to do all this working out which you can see on this page by all the different colors and scribbles that I've been doing. But my students, mashallah, they're so intelligent, they can do the whole paper and not do a single drop of working out. So, I mean, it's for everybody now to think about the homework that you've done and think, how was your homework? Did your homework have working out? Did you do stuff? Did you multiply things? Did you draw a timeline? Did you do division? Did you do minus? Did you do divide, adding, taking away? Did you draw a little stick man? What did you do? Uh, I don't think you did it. So that's something that you need to improve on when you do your next week's paper. Because that's not how we do our test work and stuff. Okay, lovely. That's the end of our uh, video for the maths video. I'm just going to quickly stop it and get some results back. Okay.